here's Ed Bernstein. Hi, welcome to our show. Well, this is a familiar looking man. Uh, Steve Shore has been involved. How about as familiar as there is, I think. Yeah, no, you, you, I mean, how, it's about 30, 40, 40 years. 40 years. Right. 40, 40, 40 years, years you've been um, involved in Las Vegas um, television and news. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about the 40 years. A little bit later on in the show, uh, Dr. Dan Deems uh, from Physical is going to be here. He's going to talk. Do you know that there's more people that um, get injured from falls than from motor vehicle accidents? Without a doubt. You already knew that. Oh, I already knew okay, that. Okay, well, we're going to talk about yeah. that with uh, a couple of the, the docs and physical therapists at, uh, from Physical that we have, cool. RJ. Um, you've been an icon here for 40 years. Well, I don't you, know if you, I'd call myself an icon, but I've been here for well, 40 I years. I mean, you, you look, you walked into the studio here, and you remember the studio when it had one less floor. I when built the studio. You built the studio. I mean, yeah. Be, Kate, uh, yeah. I, actually, I took over at the same point that it changed from KORK TV mm -hmm. when Donnery Media lost the license and Valley Broadcasting picked up the license. At the time, it became KVBC TV before what it was, is today. And the old KRK studio was on Boulder Highway. Uh, Jim Rogers and his partner purchased this skating rink. That's what this building was, mm -hmm. was a skating rink. And I el actually helped design the studios and the business offices and all of those things that were going to go into this building. So th this brings back a lot of memories. Uh, this brings back the memory uh, for me of the MGM fire. I was the news director and anchor at the time of the MGM fire. And, 1980? And 1980, November right. 21st, 1980. And, and I remember it like it happened yesterday, 7.07 uh, in the morning. And I was home at the time. Um, so this studio meant a lot to me over time. And, and I think it means a lot to the community because of its history about what it has presented the Las Vegas community and the Southern Nevada community about what has happened in their world, as we just saw in the 1 October incident. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when I, when I think about uh, your life here in Vegas, there's been so many ups, so many downs, you've seen so many ups and downs. I mean, it seems like in, in, in so many ways your life has uh, mimicked what has been going on in our town with the highs and the lows. In and, a lot of ways. And, and, and just getting through it all and coming out the other side and um, not only surviving, but doing well. But do you know what it is? It's the people, it's the community. As big as Las Vegas gets, you and I both know, the community remains very, very small. The community remains, uh, and, and you see it when you have something like 1 October where people lock arms together and they say, this is our community, we are Vegas strong, we are, we are uh, Vegas pride, we are who we are. And I think in, in many communities when you grow, it was 300,000 population when I first came. It's now over two million, they're saying it's gonna go to three million. Yeah. But when you still have that community that pulls itself together during good times and bad times, it's my own life. Um, there's a lot of times that I, I thought I just wanted to give up. And, and, and it's been the community that has said, what are you doing next? Where, where are you going next? What, what, what can happen next? And I think the community is the same way. So when, when you're dealing with the, uh, the personal things that you, you go through, and, and, and I mean, you've had you know, medical issues, you've had a son who was, um, who was killed. killed in an airplane, airplane crash. crash. Uh, I was crushed by a tractor trailer. You're, and then you, you remember that. I, I mean, of course I remember. And then you had a, a recent, some mm -hmm. recent medical issues right. as well. It seems like right. you get over something, and and life is great for a while, and you know, you're riding a good wave. Then there's another. But but there's a situation. Okay, that there, there, yeah. there's a point in life where you can't blame other people. You can't say why is it me. You've got to get this person inside. So. So I've always been an individual that believes in this person inside, who I am as an individual, what, what drives me forward. I wear a pin that says make a difference because I think every single person has the opportunity to make a difference in someone's life every single day. I see you do it, I see your family do it. It's an amazing process, but you first must believe in who you are. And I think what has taken me from the bad times to the good times to the bad times to the good times to the bad times to the good times 
is when I've never lost the belief of who I am, what I am, and what I can do in life. And I'm driven by one thing, and that's people and community. I, it's my driving force. I will, till the day I die, I will do whatever I can to try to make this great place that we call home a little bit better. It's, it's just who I am. I can't change and, that. And, and, and do you sense at times, especially now, what's going on in the world, around the country, that things are perhaps not getting better? It's my biggest disappointment. Um, I grew up through the 60s and 70s. Uh, I marched down Broad Street in Philadelphia with uh, um, with the mummers. Uh, with, uh, <laughs> no, I marched down Broad Street in Philadelphia <laughs> with, um, uh, with Jesse Jackson mm -hmm. and, and um, the Reverend Leon Sullivan and uh, uh, Ralph David Abernathy. When, when life at that time was a challenge of trying to reach equality. And in the 70s, I believed that we were heading in that direction. And I think, unfortunately, today we face the same problems and the same questions that we faced in the 60s and 70s. And, and that does bother me. That, that does bring to me a question of where we are going and, and what we are doing. L listen, we, we are all the same. We are all, we're all the same. It's just this outside shell that we have that why it, why it puts people to the edge is beyond me. But until we get to the point of where we did get to at the end of the 70s, um, that that we can draw forces together, then what happened the other day in, in, in New York, a couple of weeks ago in New York, what happened in, in Las Vegas, what happens yeah, in, in, uh, at the World Trade Center, all of those things will continue until we can lock arms and say enough is enough. Yeah. You've been very good, Steve, at, um, at accepting change. Uh, when I look back at your career, um, you know, you, television was, you know, at its prime and it was mm -hmm. a developing uh, technology when you were at the cutting edge, you know, being, uh, doing the news, the news director, anchorman, um, newspapers, you went through the newspaper thing being a, a writer, publisher, and uh, then uh, cable got big. You went and worked cable. for the cable company, and now you're, you know, you're you're, you're doing a couple things mm -hmm. that are really, you know, very contemporary um, with podcasts and cable and um, and internet. Um, uh, you had the Now Inter Report. In 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 now Report. The Now is, Report, right. which is which is I mean, you digital end to media. It, it is, a, 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 if you want to call it that, you can call it a newspaper, but it's digital in nature and people can, can look at it on their, on, their, um, on their phone, on their, in an app, whatever they want to do, because I, I believe, for me, I believe the digital world is where we're all going. Sooner we're all going to go to the digital world. Um, the amount of, of people that now read this paper, it, it becomes infinitesimal. It's the digital world. It's the same thing on my on my TV show under the Vegas Sun. It, it is on cable. It's 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 on satellite. It, it is a different world than we used to be. If you listen, if you didn't, you're lucky. You're you're on commercial TV. But for a lot of people, it's gone past the commercial TV. It still is on that device, yeah. uh, that digital device that means so much. It's the world is changing, and you've you've got to be able to pivot and meet the changes that are coming on. Well, why did you see a need for the NOW report? Um, it's, it was basic. You, you uh, got frustrated with the no, newspapers, right? I mean, no, I, got, I didn't get frustrated with newspapers. Yeah. I got frustrated with opinion. Uh -huh. uh, I'm from an era where you gave people the facts. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. You gave them the facts. You let them make up their decision. What I saw in the process in the last presidential election was, was people not give, being given the facts, being told what to think. And that's, that's not what media is supposed to be. And, and I believed that the time had come for a, a, a newspaper, digital newspaper, that was fair, balanced, and unbiased. And, and, and that's what I sought to produce. I brought in journalists that I have known in this community for a long time. Who, who works in an hour Casey report? Smith, um, Glenn Meek. Um, Ricky Cheese, pe journalists that I knew, 
And, and we made a decision that it's going to be, here's the facts, here's the stories, you make up your mind. You, you make up your decision. Because I, I, I think we have all been opinionated to death. It seems like that you, you have, uh, particularly in cable news, you have people that are giving opinions and then selling it like facts. Like news. Like news. Mm -hmm. whether, whether it's uh, Fox on this side or MSNBC on that side. Doesn't matter. Right. Doesn't matter. They're, they're both saying the same thing, but they're giving their slant and saying it's, it's the facts. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily the facts. It's their opinion of what the facts are, when in, when in, in, in reality, it should be the public that makes up their so, opinion. So you do, do you not believe that if that somebody can express a fact that that there are certain universal rights and wrongs? I, I think there's always a place for editorials. I think there's always a place for opinion. And and I don't have any problem. I, I even have columnists in, in the Now report that that are I don't agree with their opinion, but it's their opinion. But it's clearly marked as opinion or a column. I'm fine with that. I really am fine with that. But don't put it in news. And don't say that's news, because it's not. How, did, how do we get to the NOW report? It's easy. It's just... NOWreport.com or something? Uh, <laughs> actually, it's funny that you say that, because what I wanted was, I'm, I'm, I love this town. I love right. Las Vegas. Right. So we created the NOWreport.Vegas, because okay. I want to promote the Vegas. Dot Vegas, right. It's dot Vegas. Okay. And then you, 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 the cable show you have uh -huh. that reaches, Under the Vegas sun. reaches around the world, basically. Seven right? foreign countries, 213 cities, plus Las Vegas. Right. Um, I, I just had a show where we, we highlighted the young people, uh, because we hear so much about the negativity of education. We highlighted the young people from the Las Vegas Arts Academy. Amazing young people. Yes, yeah. I brought stars on. We had, we had the, the chairman of the county commission who, for the first time on my show, said that he believed there needed to be some legislation to stop the sale of bump stocks. He had not, not done that until he got on my show. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a varied uh, program. Uh, mm -hmm. Stars like you do. It, it's, a, it's like what you do. You, what, what, you and I are like twins. <laughs> you, you have much have more, more hair. hair. More hair, more, much more hair. What, <laughs> the, uh, I, I wanted to ask you about your son. Um, grown, grown man had children, wife, family. Um, he was up in a private airplane? Private airplane with a friend of his. He had just gotten back from a gaming conference in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, the night that he got home, he uh, went to see his family, and uh, his children and his wife were doing gymnastics. Um, and David wanted to uh, relax. They didn't want to just sit and wait until after the gymnastics was over. They still mm -hmm. had an hour to go. Right. So he called a friend of his who he had been up in his private plane before. Um, this was outside of, uh, of Atlanta, Georgia, um, in a place called Afloretta. And uh, they went up in the airplane, and David doesn't fly, but his, it was his friend's plane. And unfortunately, they, the friend did some maneuvers that... Um, Maybe they, he shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. And um, they flatlined the plane and they slammed to the ground and my son was killed. Um, and has that affected you when you fly? Is it? No. No, not at all. No, it's just, uh, I mean, the, the tragedy. I know what you're affects me is that I know that he's okay. What affects me is that I believe that um, that I had 40 years of the most amazing young man's life that any father could ever ask for. Um, and it was, I, I look at that. I have a lot of friends and I talk to people now who lose children and, and the single toughest thing I think as a parent, because we don't, we're not prepared for it, is to survive losing a child. It's, it's the hardest thing in the world. And, and what I tell people is, it doesn't ever get better. I, it doesn't ever get better. When, when, when David's birthday takes place, it hurts the same way. When, when holidays, like Halloween, because he loved Halloween with me, right. took place, it hurts. Christmas, it hurts. Um, but you rely on the memories, those positive memories that, that make me laugh. Um, and and I, I'm lucky, I have another son. Um, 
who was a captain in the Clark County Fire Department, who was the greatest son that a dad could ever have. Um, but I'll never forget about David. I'll never, never not go through the pain of not having my son. But I think it has made me as, a, as, a, as an individual stronger because I, I believe that if you can survive that type of crushing disaster on you, then you can survive anything. Yeah. You can read uh, Steve Shore at the Now Report. Now, the Now Report dot. Dot Vegas. Dot Vegas. <laughs> Fair, impartial. Fair, no? balanced, balanced, unbiased. Unbiased. Fair, balanced, balanced unbiased. unbiased. Or you can catch him on oh, the cable channel is what? 96 or 1096 90, in Las Vegas. Right. Under the Vegas Sun, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5 o'clock, Sunday at 7 o'clock. And of course, um, you can always find this guy on uh, on Facebook. I mean, he's always got something. <laughs> he's always got something interesting to say. Thank you uh, so much, Steve. And uh, my friend, you, and, and I should and I should mention we have a, a school named after you. Yes. Great honor to, uh, serving we show to you. Yeah, Steve Shore uh, elementary, elementary School. school right? Yeah. And uh, they're wonderful kids. That's that's wonderful. great. I'm great. there all the time. I know you're hands-on with that. So. <laughs> We'll be right back. Hey, how you can avoid ending up in the OR because you fell. We'll get right back and uh, give you some information on how to do that. There are many types of careless drivers. Those who text and drive, drink and drive, and those distracted drivers. If you've been hurt, you need to call me. Enough said. Call Ed. EdBernstein.com.